Mushroom hunting is a beloved pastime for many, but let's be real, it can also be a bit intimidating. After all, you don't want to end up in the hospital, or worse, six feet under because you accidentally chowed down on a poisonous mushroom. That's where spore prints come in. This simple yet effective method can help you accurately identify the mushrooms you have come across. Giving you the confidence to enjoy your foray into the fungal world, you will be able to see the unique characteristics of a mushroom's spore, which can be a key identifier for different species. Plus, let's be honest: there's something super cool about being able to identify a mushroom just by looking at its spore print. So join us as we delve into the world of mushroom identification. And unlock the secrets of the spore print. If you're making a spore print for cultivation purposes, check this video out. Let's get shroomy. Prep. First, just a warning: when you are handling any unidentified mushrooms, always wear powdered-free gloves, since you are not 100% sure of the mushroom species you are dealing with. Some species of mushrooms. Like death caps, are so poisonous that just touching them and then licking your fingers can cause illness. As a rule of thumb, better safe than sorry. If you find a mushroom in the woods and want to make a spore print of it, try using wax paper to wrap and protect the mushroom. Other materials like plastic or cling wrap traps moisture too easily and may possibly trigger a false impression of the spore print. The mushroom you wish to make the spore print with must be a mature mushroom, since young mushrooms may not have developed mature spores yet. Various mushrooms have different characteristics when mature, but one way to tell a mature mushroom in most species is that they will have no veil. The veil is a thin membrane that covers the spore-bearing surface while it is still developing, making a spore print. Once you've gotten your mushroom home, all you need is a little bit of patience, some white or colored paper depending on the natural color of the spore, aluminum foil, or a glass slide if you're feeling fancy or you wish to look at a spore under a microscope. Most mushrooms have gills. For mushroom with gills, the spores are on the surface of the gills. To collect spores from your freshly picked mushrooms, follow these steps. Cut off the stalk at the highest point without touching the gills using a sterilized tool like a scalpel, and lay the mushroom gill side down on your preferred surface. If the gills are light, try a dark-colored piece of paper. If the gills are dark, try a light-colored piece of paper. If the color is uncertain, half the cap can go on the dark paper and half on the light. To help the mushroom release its spores. Put a drop of water on top of the cap, and don't overdo it. Cover your mushroom with a glass or container, as this will help to keep your mushroom from drying out while eliminating airflow. The glass will prevent any potential toxicology effect. To keep the printing process dry, you can put in dampered crystals to suck up any excess moisture. Depending on the freshness of the mushroom and the humidity of the enclosed area. Your mushroom should release millions of spores onto the paper in four to eight hours. You may also want to leave it overnight to ensure that enough spores have fallen. You have now a spore print. Some mushrooms do not have gills. For example, polypores have pores instead of gills. The ones growing on trees and logs can be tricky to make spore prints from. These hard polypores take longer to mature. Before producing their spores, to ensure your prints reflect the size and shape of harder polypores, try wrapping the fungus overnight in wet paper towels or newspapers before placing them down onto your preferred surface. Remember that the spore-bearing surface always faces downwards as it grows. Interpreting your print. Now that you have made your spore print, it's time to interpret it. Take a close look at the spores and see what color they are. Different mushroom species will produce different colored spore prints, 
so this can be a key identifier. For example, some mushroom species like the orange peel fungus or the death cap produce white spores, while other species can produce brown, tan, orange, olive, pink, black, or even purple spores. So if you come across a mushroom with white spores, you can narrow down your identification options to species that also produce white spores. It's like a fungal fingerprint. Don't forget to snap a pic for reference. Trust us, you'll thank yourself later when you're trying to remember that one mushroom you saw on your hike last week. So go ahead and bust out your phone and snap a pic for the gram, or just for your personal mushroom identification library. Either way, having a visual reference can be a huge help in accurately identifying your mushroom. Here are some examples of edible mushrooms that can be identified with the help of a spore print. The agaricus species are a family of fungi that includes the much-loved meadow mushrooms. Its spore print is typically dark brown to black, enjoyed by humans since the dawn of time. These tasty mushrooms can be found growing wild in sunnier climates. The Bolita species includes a few edible mushrooms like the delicious porcini. Their spore print is usually dark brown to purple, often a key to confirming its ID. The delicious saffron milk cap mushroom is in the Lactarius family. Its spore print is typically whitish to pale orange, often with a darker circular depression. If you're lucky enough to find a saffron milk cap, it can bring an added zing to any meal or recipe. There are plenty of resources out there to help you determine the species of your mushroom based on its spore print. One option is to consult a mushroom identification guide. These handy books often have color photos and descriptions of different mushrooms, along with information on their spore print colors. I've included some of our favorite guides down in the description below. Or if you're feeling adventurous, you might consider consulting an expert. There are plenty of mushroom enthusiasts out there who will be more than happy to help you identify your mushroom based on its spore print. Just be sure to do your research and make sure you're consulting a reliable source. And remember, always err on the side of caution when it comes to mushroom ID. If you're unsure, it's better to leave it be than risk accidentally consuming a poisonous mushroom. So the next time you're out mushroom hunting, don't be afraid to get a little spectacular and make some spore prints to help you on your ID journey. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button. And for all things mushrooms, please consider subscribing and going to mushroomsite.com.